So in this tutorial I want to show you how to develop a simple audio effect. So it's kind of a continuation of the introduction to GUI widgets video tutorial. So I'm going to create a new effect, uh, create new cabbage effect. I'm going to save it on the desktop. I'm going to call it effect.csd and I'm going to replace the one that's there. Okay. So by default, CSA or cabbage is going to create a simple effect that pipes audio from the left and right channel into a CSUN instrument and it has a simple gain control here. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the NCH lines of code. The NCH opcode grabs audio input. Uh, if you pass it a 1, it's from the left. If you pass it a 2, it's from the right. Okay, I'm going to replace that with a disk in 2 opcode, which reads sound file from disk. So, you can see on the desktop here, I've got this file, 06 underscore piano.web. So I'm going to use that file to prototype my effect. And then when I'm finished, I'm going to put back in the two lines of code that access the input on the left and right channels. Okay. Uh, the piano.wav file is in the same directory as my CSD file. So therefore, I don't have to pass a full path to the file. So I can just put in 06 underscore piano.wav. If I save that, control S to save, and I turn up the gain, in a moment we should hear piano music. Okay, so now we've got some audio to work with. Now we can start to apply some kind of effects. So I'm just going to drag this down a little bit. Now, so first, what can we do? A simple effect, we can use some kind of variable delay line. Uh, so first of all, we're going to create an LFO. I'm going to give it an amplitude of 20 and a frequency of 0.1. And I'm going to create an A rate variable. And I'm going to use V delay, if I can spell it correctly. So the V delay opcode in C sound is a variable delay opcode. The first input it takes is an audio signal. So I'm going to sum the left and right channels and I'm going to send it to there. So we're just going to build a, a mono effect. I'm going to divide it by two because I don't want any distortion. So when you're summing two signals together, if they're both a max amp, potentially you're going to get some kind of distortion. And I'm going to pass the output from my LFO in here. Okay, so this LFO is going to generate a sine wave like this by default. That's a pretty terrible sine wave, but one cycle of a sine wave. And I'm going to use that to control the delay time for the V delay. So that's this parameter here. So what's ha going to happen is over time, the delay size is going to change and that's going to affect the pitch of the signal. So I'm just going to actually sum this to, remember that this ALFO is going to go between 20 and minus 20. So I'm just going to plus this to 40. So ours is going to go between 20 and 60. And I'm going to set a max delay time of 1000 milliseconds. So the delay time is in milliseconds. So the first parameter again is an audio signal. The next parameter is the delay size in milliseconds. And the last parameter is the max delay. So your delay size should always be less than the max delay time. Okay, so now I'm going to sum this to our outputs. <coughs> Excuse me. And a delay plus a2. And I'm going to save this. Okay, I've got an error. And I can see it already. Already, it's a delete. And uh, now, okay, so we should hear some kind of. Okay, so we're hearing some kind of detuning on the signal. What we can do is we can turn that down. I'm going to go into edit mode. I'm going to right click, I'm going to create 
a new R slider. Make it just a little bit bigger. I'm going to set the range, so the minimum is going to be 0, the max is going to be 100, and I'm going to set it to be 0 by default. And I'm going to change that to depth. Okay. So now I'm going to come back to here. I'm going to use k depth and I'm going to use chan get. Remember, chan get is the opcode that we use to retrieve the values from our widgets. So this widget uses a channel called depth. So I'm going to put in depth here. I'm going to save this. So every time I change this, k depth is going to be updated. So this control here relates to this line of code here, whereas this control here relates to this line of code here. Okay, so I'm not using k depth anywhere yet, but I'm going to put it in here, and I'm going to replace the 20 with k depth, and I'm going to save it. So when we turn this up, and eventually the piano comes in. So we don't hear any effect now because k depth is zero, which means our LFO is zero, which means that there's effectively no delay happening. But as I turn this up, so now we're hearing some strange kind of repitching of the signal. So I'm just going to put in another R slider in beside that one. On the first one, I'm going to add some text to let us know that it's controlling the depth, if you like, of the effect. And in this one, it's going to control the rate of the effect. And I'm going to set this from 0 to 10, and I'm going to call this rate. So down here, I'm just going to quickly copy and paste this, change this to rate, and change k-depth. K rate, and you probably know where I'm going with this. I'm going to put in K rate here, and I'm going to save it. So, I turn it up. We're getting no effect first off. So even when I turn up the depth here, we're still hearing no effect because the rate is at zero. But if I turn this up. If you're careful with these parameters, you can create some kind of chorus effect. And if you're absolutely reckless with them, you can create some kind of crazy effects. Okay, turn it down. Obviously, you tidy up the GUI on this now as well. So when I'm ready for production, when I'm ready to use that as a plugin, I'm just going to quickly do this. I'm going to save it and I'm going to export it. So the steps I took there, I basically took out this disk in two and I put back in A1 and A2 in CH, in CH1 and in CH2. So effectively what I'm doing is, because we're going to export as a plugin, we don't want, it makes no sense for a plugin to play the same audio file each time, otherwise it's effectively useless as a plugin effect. So we want to make sure that it's accessing the audio from the track so I've done that. I can export as a plugin effect. I'm going to save it in my VST folder. I'm going to call it simple effect save. That's been created. Okay, now I'm going to open a DAW. I'm going to open Reaper. And I'm going to insert media file. I'm just going to insert that same piano piece because I know where it is. It's on the desktop. Um, there we are. Okay. So that's the piano piece. Scroll out. And now I hit effects. And it's going to search my effects. If I go to VST, and I think I called it simple effect. There we go. Hit OK. And there's the effect. So now if I play this, 
and if it's actually playing true. Sandwar, we should hear something. Just turn up the gain and I can play with this. So we hear nothing when the gain is down. There you go, that's a very simple effect from start to, well I wouldn't say finished because it's pretty useless, but it serves well as an example of how to create a simple audio effect and how to control different parameters of it using simple GUI sliders. Okay, till next time. Ciao.